Okay, so the purpose of this little video here is to explain the relationship between the short run Phillips curve and the aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph as it relates to AP macroeconomics. Um, the first thing you always need to do with any graph, as we start to draw it here, is get the labeling down. What you were going to do is you were going to label inflation on the vertical axis. Remember in economics, uh, specifically macroeconomics, most of the time uh, price levels or, or money or prices go on the vertical axis. In this case, it's inflation. You'll remember that inflation goes on the vertical axis because I is a vertical letter and you can just put it right next to the vertical axis there. The other part of the graph that needs to be labeled properly is the horizontal axis, and that is going to be unemployment. And you are going to put unemployment under the graph as a way to remember that you were supposed to label that as unemployment. The short run Phillips curve itself, I tend to draw mine a little bit curved because that's the way I learned it, um, or I was taught that way. On the AP ex uh, keys and on the AP exam, it tends to be more of a straight line. Lately, either way is fine. The key is that you want to have it sloping down into the right, as you can see here, so progressing in that direction. Um, so the short run Phillips curve and the long run Phillips curve, which we'll talk about in a second, and the aggregate supply and aggregate demand graph are the only two graphs in this course that can represent the economy as a whole. There's another graph, the Keynesian equilibrium, that's no longer in the AP macro curriculum that you need to worry about. But the short run Phillips curve and the aggregate supply and aggregate demand graph are the only graphs um, that can represent the entire economy. So there is a phenomenal chance that you are going to be asked about one of them, if not both of them, on the AP exam. So as you can see, this one slopes down to the right. You got unemployment on the bottom. You have inflation. And if you think about it, this graph should make intuitive sense. As you are progressing from, let's say, A to B, as you move from A to B, unemployment is going to increase. As unemployment is increasing, that means less people have jobs, less people have income. Their ability to purchase items drops. Their disposable income goes down. Uh, we're talking as a group. Uh, so if you think about 2007, 2008, the recession, as unemployment went from 5 to roughly 10% in a very short period of time, it was also marked by a drop in prices of a lot of things, uh, oil and gas and um, raw materials and copper and all those things. The price on those things collapsed because global demand for those products pretty much dried up. And if you think about it, that should make sense. As more people are unemployed, they have less income to spend on things, therefore the price of things tend to go down. As unemployment goes down, so as you go from B to A, spending picks up a little bit because more people have jobs, more people have disposable income, so they're purchasing all goods and all services. Companies behave this way too. They start ramping up investment, and you tend to see a little bit of inflation pick up. Okay, so that should make intuitive sense as you look at this graph. Now, um, one other way to think of this graph I think that works pretty well as I'm drawing the aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph here, is you have the short run aggregate supply curve. In many ways, if I draw a dotted line here, in many ways this short run Phillips curve is a mirror reflection of the short run aggregate supply curve. So I'll just label this up here, short run Phillips curve. Remember you have inflation, and if you just think about the two graphs, you have the price level over here, you have inflation over here, so they're similar. And this is real GDP. Another way to think about real GDP is output. Well, unemployment is almost like the opposite of that. It's the, the lack of output. So those go kind of similar. And so what do I mean by that? That they're kind of mirror reflections. Anything that's going to cause you to move along the short run aggregate supply curve, so if we make this A, is going to cause you to move along the short run Phillips curve. Okay, so you have ABC on the short run aggregate supply curve. You now have ABC on the short run Phillips curve. So what we know about the aggregate supply aggregate demand graph is, and I'll just use a different color maybe, um, changes in aggregate demand cause you to move along the short run aggregate supply curve. And so therefore it stands the reason that anything that's going to shift aggregate demand therefore causes you to move along the short run Phillips curve. And there's sort of a relationship there. As aggregate demand increases, or as let's say aggregate demand decreases from, from aggregate demand to aggregate demand prime here, so this way, you're, as you're moving to the left on the short run aggregate supply curve, you're going to move to the right 
on the short run Phillips curve. Okay? And as you proceed from AD prime to AD2, farther down, you're going to still continue farther down to the right on the short run Phillips curve. And this makes sense. You're kind of dealing with a recession here. Okay, sorry, I had a little interruption there. Um, so I, I believe where I left off was as you're moving along the short run Phillips curve, you want to think of it as you, something's happened with aggregate demand. There's been a change, if you will, in either C, I, G, or net exports, and that's caused you to move along the short run Phillips curve. You just don't see a graph moving to represent that. Okay? And so that's how you want to think of these things. You also... Anything that would cause the short-run aggregate supply curve to shift is going to cause the short-run Phillips curve to shift, but once again, it's like a mirror reflection. So if aggregate supply goes to the right, the short-run Phillips curve is going to go to the left. And as aggregate supply goes to the left, like a negative supply shock, the short-run Phillips curve is going to go to the right. And once again, that should make sense. Remember, this is stagflation. Aggregate supply shifting to the left normally. Well, think about what's happening on this graph over here as you go to the right. At all levels of unemployment, you're getting higher levels of inflation, which is sort of true um, in stagflation, right? You have unemployment, a stagnant economy, and inflation. That's where you get the term stagflation from happening at the same time. Okay, so a couple of other things here. I had mentioned that aggregate supply and aggregate demand can represent the economy as a whole, and you, do, you can do that by putting the long-run aggregate supply on here. So this would be aggregate demand. This would be, so this is an economy at full employment. Well, you can do the same thing with the Phillips curve. So we have inflation here. Once again, unemployment goes under. Unemployment rate. Okay short-run Phillips curve, and the way you can represent the economy as a whole, remember the long-run aggregate supply curve, they show full, shows full employment right there. The long-run Phillips curve, sorry, long-run Phillips curve, is going to also represent full employment, but it tends to be a specific number. So they might say, assume that the natural rate of unemployment or the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment or the full employment level is at 6%. Let's just say, so you would put 6% right there. And so this point here, if you look at the aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph, that's A. This point here is A. That would represent an economy at full employment in equilibrium. Uh, on the AP exam, if they ask you to draw an economy in a recession, you're going to have your intersection somewhere over here, okay, below full employment output. Okay, and you'd probably have to label this like Y1 and PL1 or something like that. Well, you can represent the same thing on this graph. Remember, I moved aggregate demand, so that would be a movement along this graph. So if this is point B, you're going to be over here on the Phillips curve. And think about it. Your unemployment level is going to be above the full employment level, and that's the symptoms of a recession. On the other hand, if they ask you to show an economy experiencing inflation, well, you're over here. You're beyond full employment output. Well, the same thing is going to happen over here. You're beyond full employment. Your level of unemployment is below full employment level, and that means you're going to experience some inflation. And you can see that represented on this graph. As you get below the full employment level, the inflation starts to pick up, and you see it there. Okay? Um, so you want to keep all of those things in mind. Anything that causes aggregate demand to move causes you to move along the short-run aggregate supply curve. That causes you to move along the short-run Phillips curve. Anything that causes the aggregate supply curve, the short-run aggregate supply curve to shift causes the, uh, the short-run uh, Phillips curve to actually shift. And so you can represent, as I said, you can represent the entire economy on either one of these two graphs. So there is a 100% chance that one of these two graphs is going to be on the AP exam. And there's a good chance, I would think, that perhaps both will be on there. Um, so you kind of want to keep those things uh, in mind. It's almost like the short-run Phillips curve, as I said, is a mirror reflection of the short-run aggregate supply curve. Okay. Um, and one last thing, anything that causes the long-run aggregate supply curve to shift in the long run, whether it be, and remember the long-run aggregate supply curve, you want to think of as a 
almost the same thing as the production possibilities curve. So there was more resources, better technologies, better workers, more workers. Um, a lot of the times will cause the long run Phillips curve to also shift. But they'll usually tell you there's been a change in the natural rate of unemployment and then you would have to move that. If they said the natural rate of unemployment, let's say, declined from 6 to 5%, well, then you would draw that right in there. And as I said, it tends to be a little more specific when they tell you, you know, they might say the full employment rate's 5%, so they're expecting you then to put the 5% down here at the bottom. All right, hope, uh, hope this video is helpful, and if you have any questions, we'll discuss it in class.